Hey everyone, U.S. immigration lawyer Michael Ashuri here. And in today's video, I just want to make sure that green card holders are protecting their status and that they're not putting themselves at risk for forfeiting their green card unintentionally. Many people think, oh, I got my green card. I'm all safe now. My status is secured in the United States. I'm all good. But the reality is that green card holders could potentially lose their green card. And one common way that a green card holder can lose their green card unintentionally is by spending too much time outside of the United States. So in this video, I want to highlight some important information that you need to know about to help to protect your status and also some ways to help shield your green card in the event that you do need to travel for an extended period of time. I think this is going to be a very important video for green card holders, so make sure to stick around. today's video, I want to caution green card holders. I want to basically caution lawful permanent residents about the risks of unintentionally abandoning their green card based on prolonged travel outside of the United States. And I want to offer a solution as to one way to help shield your status. So as a green card holder, you are authorized to travel in and outside of the United States. Now, generally, this is not a problem, but if your travel is for too long, then it can trigger issues. Now, let me explain what I mean. If your travel is for 180 days or less, then generally when you're seeking readmission to the United States, there shouldn't be any issues. Again, there are exceptions and scenarios where it may be problematic, but for the most part, travel for less than six months generally should not cause issues. Once you're outside of the United States for over 180 days, when you seek re-entry to the United States, CBP, Customs and Border Protection, can basically inquire with you and they can ask you questions to see whether you've been maintaining your status as a lawful permanent resident in the United States. Lawful permanent residents must have the intent to reside in the United States. So just know that if you leave the United States, for over 180 days, upon your re-entry to the United States, Customs and Border Protection can basically inquire with you just to make sure that you've been maintaining your status as a lawful permanent resident in the United States. If your travel outside of the United States was for a year or more, then your green card alone is no longer valid to seek re-entry to the United States. So again, let's say you left the United States and you stayed outside of the United States a year or more. When you seek to re-enter the United States, if you do not have a re-entry permit, which we'll talk about in a moment, then your green card alone is no longer a valid document to permit you to re-enter the United States. So in order to re-enter the United States, you would have to apply for something called an SB1, returning resident visa. Now, the SB1 returning resident visa, there's several requirements to it, but it's basically for people that left the United States intending to return, but for some reason outside of their control, they were forced to stay outside of the United States longer than they originally anticipated. And so when they left the United States, they were planning, for example, maybe a trip that was gonna be for a few months, but maybe something happened that they weren't expecting that kept them outside of the United States for much longer. And they ended up staying outside of the United States for a year or more. So again, as we talked about, if a green card holder stays outside of the United States a year or more, the green card can no longer be used to enter the United States. So that's what the SB1 visa is for. It's for that situation where somebody originally planned to leave the United States for perhaps a more limited period of time, but for circumstances beyond their control, they were forced to stay outside for longer than they expected. These are some very important points that we just discussed because we've now gone over two scenarios where prolonged travel can be problematic. Again, travel over 180 days can result in CBP inquiring with you to see if you've been maintaining your status and travel for a year or more. Now at this point, without a re-entry permit, the green card cannot be used to re-enter the United States. So what can you do if you're a green card holder and you know that you're gonna need to spend prolonged time outside of the United States? Well, if you're in that position, again, even if you're planning on leaving the United States for 
over six months. Something that you should consider, and you should consult with an immigration lawyer about this, but something that you should consider is applying for a re-entry permit. A re-entry permit is a travel document. It looks sort of like a passport. It's a booklet with pages on it. And one of the functions of a re-entry permit is that it can help to protect a lawful permanent resident in the event that they're traveling for prolonged periods of time. Now, what the re-entry permit does, it's, it can be valid for up to two years, depending on the amount of time that you've spent outside of the United States in recent years but it can be valid for up to two years. And basically what the re-entry permit does is that if you are spending prolonged time outside of the United States, with that re-entry permit, you have a legal presumption that you basically intended to maintain your status in the United States as a lawful permanent resident. Despite the amount of time that you have spent outside of the United States. So let's say you have a re-entry permit and you leave the United States for over 180 days and you seek to re-enter the US. That re-entry permit helps to create a legal presumption that you did not intend to abandon your green card and that you intended to maintain your status as a lawful permanent resident. Now let's talk about a scenario where you leave the United States for a year or more, but you have a valid re-entry permit. Again, assuming your re-entry permit is still valid, you can use that re-entry permit to re-enter the United States without the need to get an SB1 returning resident visa. That visa that we talked about earlier that is for people that have stayed outside of the United States for a year or more. With a valid re-entry permit, you should be able to use that re-entry permit along with your green card to be able to re-enter the United States without the need for an SB1 returning resident visa. So those are two reasons why a re-entry permit can be beneficial to you. Now, I do want to mention that a re-entry permit is not a guarantee that your status will certainly be protected because again, the re-entry permit just creates a legal presumption, but that legal presumption can be rebutted with evidence presented from the other side. It can be overcome. So it's important to know that the re-entry permit is not a guarantee that your status is going to be 100% safe and protected, but it is certainly in many scenarios and in many situations, it is a step that should be taken as an added line of defense. I know we covered a lot of information in this video. I hope that you found this video and this information helpful. If you haven't yet done so, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to be in the loop with all the videos that we're posting. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching these videos. If you know anybody that can benefit from this information, please make sure to share this video with them. We're all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that can watch this video that can benefit from this information, the better. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.